I was a little boy and my father, I was a fish buyer in Angoon. We lived in a place called Stillwater, it was across from the main village there. My father had set a hook and I, I was with him when he said it and he told me just to watch the buoy and we went back to the to the dock and, and I was sitting on the dock and all of a sudden I seen that buoy just start dancing around in the water and getting pulled around and I ran inside and got my dad and told him what was going on and he said well go back out there and watch it and tell me when it stops moving and so I decided okay and I went back out there I watched it and it kind of shallowed up by the beach a little bit and it just sat there I ran in and told him so by the time he got down to the boat and got ready and went out there that you know the buoy was just sitting and it wasn't moving anymore he was able to just to pull up the, the line and, and donk the helmet and pull it right inside the boat. And uh, that, so that was my very first experience of ever seeing how a halibut hook worked and, and, and the use of it. So let me show you uh, basically how it worked. Uh, the halibut hook is made from two different kinds of wood. It's a hard wood and then the, the softer wood is made from cedar but it has a lot of strength. And then the line um, goes through and if you hold up your hook and you pull the line it should line up directly with the barb and and that way when you bait it and it floats in the water it'll float at an angle like this and um, uh, the way the bottom fish feed is they bite like that because the bait's tied in there they couldn't really get the bait but when a halibut feeds it doesn't bite like that it actually sucks its food in and the halibut will come along and it smell it and and it comes right up to it and opens its mouth and it sucks it in and when it tried to spit it out because it feels the barb the barb catches its cheek and you know the halibut sits there and he tugs on it and pretty soon he'll start pulling around that buoy with those rocks and he's trying to dragging it everywhere and then you can see the buoy is just going mad and usually was made out of a wooden float sometimes it was a seal seal gut that they had turned into an airbag and in my case as a little kid it was just an orange plastic buoy that uh you know so modern day that's how we still fish them and i know fishermen still use these you know when the halibut is fishing his belly is on the bottom you know and uh, when he comes up to eat his food he swims up and the top side of him is the, the green or tan color of the halibut and once he takes the hook in his mouth and he pulls on it and he's caught when the fishermen pull the hook, it turns the hook and it turns the halibut upside down. Mm -hmm. So as he's being pulled up through the water, he's spinning around like a big barnyard door mm -hmm. and his white side is up. So if you've ever been fishing on a fishing uh, boat commercially, whenever you pull a fish halibut aboard, you always flip it over so its belly side is up and it's more docile when its, when it's belly is up. But the great thing about these hooks is they were designed just to take a certain size halibut. Um, this angle here always kept the small ones from ever getting it in their mouth because of that spread. And the spacing here between the barb and this bottom part of the hook kept the great big ones from getting on. And they never wanted to target those big ones because the big ones were pretty much almost every time a female and they lay millions and millions of eggs in their lifetime. And so they never wanted to target the females. They targeted the medium size. And back in those days, they fished in canoes, so they could never take them big slugs aboard anyway. So by adjusting this spacing here between the barb and this bottom part of the hook, that determined how big of a halibut it would let on. One of the things you'll notice is if they have been chewed up, you know, you can see it on some of the old hooks in the collection. When you see these teeth marks in it, you know those were functional hooks and they had taken halibut. Mm -hmm. And some of them with a lot of teeth marks are very successful and, and good fishing hooks. Those ones you can tell. And so, you know, a fisherman would have favorite hooks he fished. We believe everything has a spirit. So every time one of these hooks was made, we believed it had a spirit in it. So you talked to it, you said nice things to it, you wanted it to be successful when you fished it. And, and so uh, sometimes they were carved and they'd have uh, a figure on there. Sometimes they were just plain, um, but for the most part, they had a carving on it. So in this, this hook here has a wolf carved on it. Um, some of these old hooks that have been fishing, sometimes you, not, you can't really tell in some of the museum collection hooks what the figure is on there. But trust me, whoever made it, they had a relationship with that hook and they know the spirit and they talk to it.